leaning towards that they were going to find at least one person there that wasn't uh, too comfortable with giving the death penalty to somebody that was so young, even though it was a it was a violent murder and things like that. This case is dragged on in the news for months and years at a time. And when you when you're dragging the news as much as Jody Ayers' case was, you're going to get at least one person in the in the vicinity or in the county that's picked as jury that has heard a lot about the case and wants to spare her life. You worked very hard on this case. How do you think your work contributed to Jody not getting the death penalty? Well, a lot of stuff on her case, um, we have to do a lot of behind the scenes. So a lot of the stuff you don't see that we do. Um, on this case alone, I'm, I'm hired uh, strictly for her um, appeal process. But during her guilt and innocent phase, she was going through a point where she wasn't communicating well with her attorney. She wasn't uh, getting the things investigated. So there's times that she called upon me to uh, find information out that the, the attorney wasn't helping her with or she wasn't getting a leeway with her current investigators. So now that uh, she has been convicted and she's going to be sentenced, I think, in a couple weeks, um, that's when I'm going to get uh, full going on uh, doing the investigation to hopefully uh, get her uh, a case uh, sent back for another trial and for her appeals so that she can get a fair trial. Do I believe she got a fair trial? No, because of all the publicity and a lot of mistakes that her defense team made and a lot of mistakes that the judge made on the case. So you do not believe, just to reiterate, that she got a fair trial? I don't think she got a fair trial, even though she's admitted to the killing. There's a lot of parts that people don't understand that when, you, when, you, when you're facing life and death, you need to uh, get a fair trial and you need to have good representation. And then when your relationship with your defense attorney is broken like it was with Kirk, you need to be able to um, communicate with your defense attorney and have everything that you want investigated because that's your life on the hands. And if you're not getting investigated, you need to either get new counsel or we're going to have to get a new trial. And I think this is warranted for this uh, case. I want to get to the appeal in a moment. But first, tell us a little bit about Jody's mindset during the resentencing phase and now, now that she has been spared the death penalty. Uh, I think it was funny the other night. We I was uh, Saturday night getting ready to have a barbecue, and I was cutting chicken and things like that. And Jody called me, and I was sitting there with my hands dirty, and I had the phone on speakerphone, and my fiance was there, and I was talking to Jody, and Jody's demeanor is so upbeat, and you just feel like you're just talking to the person next door, things like that. And she's hard not, a person not to like, and you know she was asking how things were and asking how I was doing. And then when we finish the conversation, I'll go, okay, Dorian, we'll talk to you later this week. And uh, you just feel like she's out to go out gardening. She's out to go do something, you know, like a normal day person. You forget that she's in one of the worst jails in America under Sheriff Joe. And Sheriff Joe has been pretty hard on her in the last few weeks. So her, her mentality is that she's ready to, I, I guess, when you get to that point and where you have nothing to do but to focus on your defense, you're looking at every single thing that you have going on in your trial and she's ready to exploit all the mistakes that were made in her trial and she has a very upbeat attitude and a very friendly attitude and it's hard to believe that this person um, was involved in such a brutal murder and you and you just it's a hard time not liking her well it's interesting you say that it's very hard not to like her but my question is she basically became public enemy number one during the first trial during the the resentencing why do you think her likability, uh, as you put it, didn't translate in the courtroom? Because she doesn't talk in the courtroom. She didn't. She only um, testified in defense during the guilt and innocent phase. And that was one of the first cases, and I've been involved in probably 10 or 15 death penalty cases, where I saw the defendant stand up and walk around the courtroom and, and have um, exhibits and things like that. And she was walking around like an attorney. So you saw the kind of attitude that she had and, and how she engaged. But most of the time, 90% of the time in the trial and the retrial, she was basically silent. And all you heard was what's on Twitter and what people thought she was saying or thinking. And she was talking through third parties. So that one part during the guilt and innocent phase, when she was uh, giving her uh, explanation and her side of the story, you could tell how, engage, uh, how in t engaging type person she is. And uh, most of the time, she's very quiet. So a lot of people don't talk. People like to comment on what she says or what she does and things like that. And unless you're having weekly conversations like I have with her, it's hard to 
really know Jody. Do you believe she is truly remorseful? I do. Um, the conversations I've had for her, she, she she admits that she's wish she could take back that you know that that hour of her life, and she is truly remorseful, and she's tried to explain that, and I think she will once she gets to Perryville um, Prison, and she's able to maybe do some um, uh, media interviews and some uh, uh, interviews on TV. You'll see that she is remorseful. However, it's my job not to determine how remorseful it is. It's my job to defend her on the facts and things like that and make sure she gets a fair trial. So I have to put my personal feelings out of it and I have to disconnect from the the public and what they think of me and why I'm defending her because it's a job of mine. And I have to concentrate on the aspects of a, a criminal defense case. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. Why are you working for Jody Arias? Well, it's my job. There's the people out there, like for instance, people ask why Who's the attorney that defends uh, defended um, the uh, person who uh, shot at Gabriel Giffords and the uh, Unabomber and all those people? But it, but it's a job that we have, and it's a job that is given to us. And when you're in this line of work, you got to be able to take your personal feelings out of it. And you know, it's nothing that like we seek out to go. I want to dis- defend a murderer. It's just that I have a I have a professional license to be an investigator that de- criminal defense, and I've been through a lot of training for capital murder defense, and we've learned to take our personal feelings out of it. And people don't understand, if you do not provide a vigorous defense of somebody, whether it's a, a murder or child molestation or just, you know, you know, running a stop sign when you go to trial, then that person has a right to appeal because they have a right to a vigorous defense. And if you don't provide that, people are going to come in behind you and see what you did not do and exploit it to, the, um, to a new judge and exploit it to the public. And it makes you look bad as a professional. So you have to do a, a good job the first time around and provide a vigorous defense. You know, Dorian, I mean, I've known you for a long time and you've been doing this for a long time. So let me ask your opinion. Do you believe that Jody Arias will get a new trial? I do. I think that um, the precedence that she, uh, with her trial and the mistakes that the, uh, the judge made, uh, the mistakes that Juan Martinez made, and also giving her um, her lead uh, attorney the ability to not talk to her for sometimes six, seven, eight months. You can't defend somebody if you don't communicate with your client. And their their uh, reputation, I'm sorry, their um, communication was irrevocably broken. And when it's broken, you have to um, be able to talk to your defendant. And when the attorney does not go see her for six, seven, eight months and doesn't communicate with her, that's a that's a basics for a new trial. You mentioned that when Jody gets moved and gets settled, she might do some more media interviews. Do you believe she will, and do you believe she should? I believe that she she will. I think she um, she should because when she gets to the prison, she's out of Sheriff Joe's control. Sheriff Joe loves the limelight. He loves to do things to get attention onto him. I think once he gets, she gets away from Sheriff Joe's control, it's going to be a more lax environment for her, and I think that she'll be willing to talk. But many have also said that she, too, enjoys the limelight, much like Sheriff Joe. Would you agree with that sentiment, that Jody Arias likes the limelight? I do. Uh, I think she likes the limelight. Uh, we're in an unprecedented stage where you have Twitter and she's making phone calls and a person is being her mouthpiece on Twitter and they're interacting with people that have sent her money for her defense and all the contacts she's had. It's it's never I've never had a case um, as much publicity, uh, Nancy Grace flying out here and all the media trucks out there. It was unbelievable, the, the tension that she got. It was almost to the level as OJ, OJ Simpson's. And people might find it shocking, but... Jody has raised an awful lot of money for her appeal. Because the way I understand it, the appeal is not taxpayer funded, at least in full. Am I correct there? Correct. And that's what people don't understand. If she would have gotten the death penalty, she would have been um, subject to a, um, an appeal that was at the taxpayer's expense. Now that she has um, uh, been spared the death penalty by a jury... Now, the uh, judge is going to decide in a couple weeks whether she gets life in prison or life in prison with parole. Now her um, appeals and her um, her reviews are going to be at her expense. Now, some appeals are going to be paid for by, automatic appeals are going to be paid for by the state. But if she wants to hire a very good attorney, which Daniel Raynek is probably one of the best in Phoenix, when she wants to hire him, Dan costs money. 
Uh, I cost money. And once you get a private attorney, you get a lot better representation. Well, Dorian, I want to thank you so much for your time. As we told the audience, you're one of the top private investigators out there. And if people want to find you, they can find you at bondinvestigations.com. Are you working on any other big cases that you want to uh, tell us about, Dorian, while we have you for a minute? Um, I've got a lot of murder cases um, that I'm working here, though, which are, are not as big notoriety here in um, Arizona. I'm working well, it's hard on, to get as big as this. It's hard to get as big as this. I'm working an insurance fraud case over in Los Angeles. I have been in contact with uh, Robert Durst, attorney in Houston, uh, because I am licensed in Texas and California, which is two of the states that he could be facing the death penalty in, and I'm death penalty certified, and I'm licensed in both those steps. And uh, I'm right now I'm going through the vetting process. Hopefully he will choose to use me. I haven't uh, talked to him in a couple of weeks, but I would look forward to working on his case. I think Robert Day's, Durst's case is very interesting to me, um, but I haven't looked at the discovery or anything like that. But that's one of the cases that I hope to get put on. He is Dorian Bond, as I said, a top private investigator. And you can find him at bondinvestigations.com. Dorian, good to see you and thank you. Thanks for having me, John. You got it. And that is our latest crime line right here, presented by HNGN News. Stay tuned to this space. We have the whole gamut, private investigators, attorneys, crime victims, families. You can get it all right here. For HNGN News, I'm John Lieberman. Thank you so much for watching and good night.